Morning, everyone, and thank you again for the invitation to speak to you today about modern cancer nursing in my country, in England. Um, and I think it's important to say this because in our situation, the burden of cancer is such that we need to draw on many areas of expertise. We cannot rely on one single discipline to manage the cancer patient in the current demand context. So we in the European Oncology Nursing Society emphasize that nurses provide expert care because we coordinate treatment and as we heard, we introduce psychosocial interventions and we look beyond the biomedical dimension of cancer. Working within multidisciplinary models promotes cultures of care which we think enhances patient well-being and safety. And we've seen evidence of that in some of the data that have been presented today. So it's not just about good ways of working, it's actually about improving the outcomes for our patients. Nurses also in, in my country, we work across hospital and community settings and across the cancer experience from diagnosis to end of treatment or end of life. And we have to constantly respond to the new treatments that are coming on, such as the new immunotherapies, with a patient-centric philosophy. What does this mean for our patients who have to manage these new treatments? We did a study recently in our society, I don't know if you can see that, I hope so, um, where we looked at four countries, Estonia, Germany, the Netherlands and the UK. We looked at the role of the clinical nurse specialist in each of those countries and we saw whether they existed or not. So you can see in Estonia, Nurses offer advice only, but they do not have a formal role as a specialist. Do they have any advanced nurse practitioner roles? We can see in Estonia, no. There's a few in Germany, but Germany is probably the least well-developed country in Europe, which may surprise you in terms of nursing roles. In the Netherlands, the role of the advanced nurse is now set in law and they have uh, legal protections to prescribe, etc. and also in the UK. And when you look at prescribing, I don't know if you have non-medical prescribing here in Russia, um, but professions other than physicians prescribe. And this is also not happening in Estonia or Germany, but is happening in the Netherlands and the UK. And again, this is because of the demand. If a patient needs a prescription, they need it when they need it. They don't need it when someone else happens to be available. So what this shows is the role of nursing is changing. Another change is salary for nursing. And what we promote in our society is more recognition of the role of the nurse and financial compensation for the role. So if you look at, this is the starting salary for newly qualified nurses. You may be interested in this, I don't know. But in Estonia, it's just over 1,000 uh, euros. You can see in Germany, in the Netherlands and in the UK. They're fairly comparable salaries. For a, This is a monthly salary and this is before tax. This is after completing an advanced program, advanced nurse program, who may be leading a multidisciplinary team or a tumor uh, discussion. So you can see the salary here for uh, stays pretty much the same, but they don't have these advanced roles. But you can see the salary in the Netherlands, about four and a half thousand. And in the UK, this can go up to six and a half thousand. So you can see there are huge vari variations in Europe in terms of compensation for nursing and reflecting the changing role of these professions. 
Uh, this, is, this was a situation I just wanted to talk briefly about. We are also lobbying in the European Parliament for better recognition of nursing, the role of nursing for better education, for better salaries, and for better protection of the role. Because in, in London, where I live, there's a real shortage of nursing. It's very expensive to live there. It's a very busy hospital environment. And so we need to attract nurses, for often from other countries. So we are telling the European Parliament that we need to have more recognition, more training, and more uh, emphasis on the potential of the role of the nurse. In, the, in England, every year, we survey our patients. We do a national survey of cancer patients every two years. And these are the results from 2018. So all patients receive a survey and they comment on their care. 80% of respondents said they were involved in the decisions about their care, and that was a statistically significant increase from last year. So our patients feel involved, which is a good thing. Over 90% of those patients were given the name of a clinical nurse specialist, and those people support the patient throughout their treatment. And again, a significant, a statistically significant rise. And the respondents said that it had been quite easy or very easy to contact that person. We give those nurses numbers and they can be contacted during office hours. 90%, almost 90% of our respondents said they were treated with dignity and respect, which is a good finding. Again, that was up from last year. And over 90% said that the hospital staff told them who to contact if they were worried. So I would invite you to consider whether all patients are provided with this level of support. And if they're not, what do they do? In our country, we rely on these specialist roles to support the patient. So in summary, Multidisciplinary working is now normal practice in the UK, and we suggest that it does benefit our patients. It also benefits our staff because it shares the burden of the work. Nursing is part of the multidisciplinary team, but increasingly it is a, a, a finite resource. I don't know if it's happening in your country, but we need to attract more nurses into the profession. Working long hours is not the answer. Research has shown that well-rested, motivated professionals work better. I think that's also true for physicians. Safety is increasingly important in our workplace, and we need to share the safety concerns that exist there. Cancer therapy is increasingly changing, becoming more complex, so we need to educate our staff. We need to involve events such as this, and we need to ensure that all members of the team are receiving equal access to education and training. And we need to understand the potential and the scope of nursing and other professions, I would say, in order to uh, improve the care and the outcomes for our patients. Thank you for your attention.